solving radical equations. Uh, welcome to Good Math with Miss B, good people. What is a radical equation? A radical equation is an equation that contains a variable inside a radical, like this, or like this, or like this. I know you're thinking that second one with the one half, but a one half is the same thing as a square root. Make sure you take that knowledge with you into this lesson. Solve the radical equation. So the first thing you want to do is isolate the radical. So on the left side of the equal sign, you have a five. You want to get rid of that five. It's positive. Let's subtract that bad boy. So when we get rid of that five on both sides, I'm going to get radical x plus one equals 11. Now that the radical is by itself, you can undo it with an exponent because the inverse of a square root is squaring it. So just like I undo division with multiplication, I undo a radical with an exponent. Boom! Love that information for you. So when I undo the radical with an exponent of two, I'm left with x plus one because I undid the radical, I inversed it. Boom! And then on the other side, because if you do to one side, you gotta do to the other side, 11 squared is 121. So then it's a regular degular equation. X plus one equals 121. Subtract one from both sides. X equals 120. Make sure you check your answers. It's imperative that you check your answers for radical equations. So number two, and let's see how many examples we have all together. We have eight examples all together. We wanna isolate the radical. There's a seven over there with the radical. I don't want that seven. That seven is being multiplied, so we're going to divide it to go ahead and um, isolate the radical. So seven, get ridding, getting rid of that, I'm gonna have the cube root of five x minus seven equals 12. To the inverse of a cube root is cubing, so an exponent of three. So to get rid of that cube root, I want an exponent of three. So we gotta cube both sides. When I cube both sides, I get rid of the radical, which is what I want. 5x minus seven equals, since I cubed 12, that's 1728. Now it's a regular degular equation. So I'm going to isolate x, add seven on both sides. 5x equals 1735, get rid of the five. You guys know how to do this part already. So x equals, 347. Make sure you check your answers. Ta da! Okay, that's example two out of eight. All right, so in this example, the radical is what? Isolated already. Oh my gosh, that makes my job easy. I don't have to isolate it. So let me just go ahead and do the inverse of this cube root. So that means I'm going to cube both sides. So I'm going to 3x minus 4 equals 8. We're gonna isolate the x, so we're gonna add four to both sides. And we're gonna cancel out that four. We're going to divide both sides by three. x equals four. Make sure you check your answers. Okay, so what if there are radicals on both sides? This is a great question. If there are radicals on both sides, you must square or cube or fourth power or fifth power both sides of the equation before you do anything else. So you don't isolate because you can't isolate because there's two of them. And isolate means to be alone. So you're gonna undo the ex radicals with exponents on both sides. So because they're radical twos, I'm gonna go ahead and square, square, okay? When I square, square, I get rid of my radical. So eight X plus six is gonna be untrapped. Uh, three squared is nine. And then the square root of X times the square root of X is just X because I did the inverse of that radical. Once I do that, 
I'm going to isolate x, so you want to get the, both x's on the same side. We're going to move the negative 8x over there. And we're going to get 6 equals x. Check your answers, people. I'm going to keep saying that. Example number 5 out of 8. Okay, I have radicals on both sides. So I jump straight to, I'm going to use exponent on both sides. It's a square root, so I'm going to square both sides. When I do that, I get 7x plus 2 equals 3 squared is 9, so that's why I have a 9. And then 3x minus 2, the square root on top of that went away because I squared it. So I'm going to distribute. When I distribute, I am going to isolate x. I'm going to subtract 7x and then we're going to add 18 to both sides divide by 20 we're going to get x equals 1 make sure you check your answers So then we have example number six, and notice we have a rational exponent, not a radical. But you should know an exponent of one third is the same as a cube root. So if you would like to change the problem to look like this instead, you can totally do that. The radical is isolated, so we're gonna undo it with a power of three. So I'm going to get 5x plus 7 equals 3 cubed, which is 27. Subtract 7 from both sides. 5x equals 20. 5x equals 4. Check your answers. <laughs> okay. So when you're doing these types of problems, you need to know an extraneous solution is a solution that does not work. Notice I keep telling you to check your answers. You must check your answers. So solve the radical equation. Isolate the radical. It's already isolated. Go us. Undo the radical with an exponent. So it's a square root, so I'm going to square both sides. Get rid of that. On the other side, notice I did 5 minus x times 5 minus x. I didn't do 25 minus x squared. Common mistake. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and distribute. Distribute. Okay, so 25 minus 5x minus 5x plus x squared. We're going to combine our like terms. And now I notice I have a quadratic because there's a squared in this problem. So when I'm solving a quadratic, I have to set everything equal to zero. So let's do that. Let's get rid of that negative 3x on both sides. Add 3x. Boom. Let's get rid of that positive 33 minus 33 on both sides. Boom. I set the problem equal to zero. Zero equals x squared minus 7x minus 8. Now I can factor it because it's a quadratic, and that's what you do when you have quadratics. And you got to solve. When you solve, you need to check your answers. I cannot say this enough. Check your answers, check your answers, check your answers. Because what you'll notice is when you plug in that lovely 8, it comes out to 3 equals negative 3. That is a false statement. 3 does not equal negative 3. So 8 is actually what we call an extraneous solution. It does not count. So I'm going to check my other answer. Does this problem even have an answer? I'm going to plug in that negative 1. Oh my goodness, 6 does equal 6 when I plug everything in. That is a true statement. So yes, I have an answer. This is my final answer. I love that for me. Make sure you check your answer. Last example. Okay, so we're going to do example number 8. Isolate the radical. It's isolated. I love that for me. Let's undo the radical with an exponent it's a square root 
So we're going to square both sides. Bada bing, bada boom. I'm going to get negative 9x plus 28 equals negative x plus 4 times negative x plus 4. Not x squared plus 16. You got to distribute. So when I distribute everything, right, I'm going to get x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 16. I'm going to combine my like terms. I'm going to simplify. And because it is a quadratic, because I have an exponent of 2, I need to make sure that I set the problem equal to 0. That's how you solve a quadratic. So we're going to get rid of the negative 9x by adding 9x to both sides. We're going to get rid of the positive 28 by subtracting 28 from both sides. And I'm going to get 0 equals x squared plus x minus 12. Minus 12. And so, I'm going to factor that. x minus 3, x plus 4, x equals 3, x equals negative 4. But what do I have to do before I decide I'm done? I have to check my answers. Check those bad boys. When I plug in 3, it checks out. When I plug in negative 4, it checks out. Oh my gosh, this problem has two answers. Yay! <sighs> and you did it. You survived all eight examples. Go back through, see if you can do the problems without my help. Like, subscribe, comment, all the things, and I'll see you in the next one. Be good.